This video is the first in a series of videos on computer programming and numerical analysis. We'll get into the details of how to program in octave and specific numerical analysis techniques in later videos. But before we do this, I want to give you a quick overview of what numerical analysis is and why engineers need to do it. First, let's talk a little bit about what numerical analysis is. Most likely, your experience with solving math problems is that there's one exact solution to any given math problem, and that solution is reached by a sequence of steps that proceed from the problem itself to its solution. Numerical analysis, however, is generally iterative in nature. For example, it's appropriate in numerical analysis to repeatedly guess a solution until you end up with an answer that's pretty close to the actual solution. This may seem weird, but engineers tend to have a different attitude towards math than most mathematicians. In general, engineers don't necessarily need or expect to get an exact solution to a given problem. We just need something that's close enough to being correct to be useful. Since the solution to the math is going to be used to design something, we can always modify our design to account for possible errors in the math. The design always has a margin of safety to account for the possibility of math errors or unexpected operating conditions. With this in mind, we use numerical analysis to replace a difficult mathematical solution approach with a lot of simpler calculations. These simpler calculations generally won't provide a mathematically exact solution, but it can give us something that's accurate enough to let us understand and design a system that will do what we want. Next, I'll walk through a couple examples of these types of calculations. The idea here is to give you a general idea about numerical analysis. We'll get into the details in later videos. My first example is solving an arbitrary function f of x equals 0. So we want to find this value of x. This problem can be difficult to solve exactly. The numerical analysis approach consists of finding the point where the sign on the function changes from positive to negative. We start with an interval within which the function changes sign. So the solution is somewhere between a and b. Next, we'll find the value of the function at the midpoint of the interval and determine which side of the midpoint the sign changes on. In this example, the sign changes in this interval. Then we redefine the interval to be on the side of the midpoint where the sign change occurs. Now we start repeating the process by finding the value of the function at the midpoint of the new interval and checking to see which side of that midpoint the solution is on. Then we can redefine the interval again and keep cutting our interval in half until the interval is so small that we're guaranteed to be close enough to the actual solution. The overall idea here is pretty common in numerical analysis. We do a series of simple numerical operations over and over again until we get close enough to an actual solution. In this case, the operations are to find the midpoint of the interval, determine the value of the function at the midpoint, decide which side of the midpoint the sign changes on, redefine the interval, and repeat the process. The next example is a numerical approach toward integration. The integral of a function is just the area under the curve defined by the function. Integration is an important process in engineering. For example, the energy stored in any system is the result of an integration, and engineers are always interested in energy storage and transfer. We can solve this problem by subdividing the area into a number of intervals. Defining rectangular areas as shown, and then adding up the areas of the rectangles. Then we increase the number of intervals and recalculate the area. If you keep increasing the number of rectangles, the solution should keep getting closer and closer to the actual solution. Typically, we stop this process once the estimated area doesn't change significantly when we add more intervals. Again, we're doing a series of pretty simple calculations. We just choose the values at the edges of the intervals, use those values to find the areas of the rectangles, and then sum up the individual areas. Keep repeating the process until the area stops changing. Let's review some of the main points from our examples relative to implementing the numerical analysis approach as a computer program. Numerical analysis approaches almost invariably require repetitive but simple calculations. 
When the computer program is executed, these steps are performed sequentially in a batch without further interaction from the user. That means that the computer program has to be set up to perform calculations repeatedly and to make decisions relative to which calculations to perform. Most numerical analysis programs will perform these types of processes. If you have measured data you'll be using, you'll need to import the data into the program. You also need to initialize some basic values for the program to start with. Looping structures are used to perform repeated calculations. Most programs will perform some kind of looping. Decisions will need to be made. In our example of finding the zero of a function, we needed to decide which side of the midpoint contained a sign change, and we also needed to decide when the interval had become small enough so that we could stop the iteration process. Finally, the program needs to provide results to the user. This could be a number or a plot. In the first part of this course, we'll learn basic computer programming techniques using an open source program called Octave. The last half of the class will be spent applying these techniques to numerical analysis problems.